the Russian and Chinese understanding of Pakistan goes is the perceived realization that Pakistan doesn't want to be used by others anymore. Hello friends, this is Imtiaz Gul with uh, an analysis on the state of Pakistan-Russia relations. In the new geopolitical order, Pakistan and Russia have been warming up to each other. Russia supports China-Pakistan economic corridor, sub-ministerial level engagements in trade, education and energy have been picking up like never before. The Russian leadership wants to intensify cooperation in security and counter narcotics under the banner of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In the current circumstances, Moscow views Pakistan's current foreign policy as more independent, assertive and grounded in the region. It also highly appreciates Islamabad's role in regional peace and stabilization efforts, that is, intensive engagement and facilitation on Afghanistan, starting with the Doha process. The element of suspicion that had for quite some time dogged the bilateral relations because of the long years of Pakistan's engagement with the United States has meanwhile made way to an unusual bilateral trust because of the letters, what diplomats call open and straight talk on regional issues, which sounds more like an independent, assertive foreign policy. The Sinopark relations, particularly after Prime Minister Imran Khan's latest Beijing visit early February, provides another indication for Islamabad's look east policy. The effort to engage more with China and Russia uh, like never before. Now, one common denominator as far as the Russian and Chinese understanding of Pakistan goes is the perceived realization that Pakistan doesn't want to be used by others anymore. The way Pakistan has been seen as being used by the United States in the two big Afghan wars. Now, as for Russia, it is keen to expand relations, particularly in the energy sector. It also supports the energy corridor projects such as Casa 1000 and TAPI, all energy uh, basically projects from Central Asia to Pakistan via Afghanistan. And obviously, stability in Afghanistan remains a big if, when, and how will these projects basically be realized? Uh, it all depends on the state of security inside Afghanistan. Now, on the face of it, this augurs well for both countries and promises big prospects of uh, economic connectivity, cooperation and trade. But there are certainly basic bottlenecks to it. Several Russian companies are under US sanctions and hence unable to directly invest in Pakistan. Secondly, the Russians are one of the largest military hardware suppliers to India. And everybody knows the acrimonious nature of relationship of uh, Pakistan and India. And these deals between India and Russia are worth billions of dollars. The decision makers in Moscow would therefore not like to annoy India by reaching out to Pakistan in a big economic or military cooperation way. They are basically hamstrung by their geo-commercial interests. Now, this is what basically limits the Russian geopolitical engagement with countries like China and Pakistan. Thirdly, Moscow still looks at uh, Pakistan through the security prism. It believes the terrorist havens in Afghanistan represent a big threat to all neighbors. The Afghan Taliban regime, according to Russian officials, remain neutral, if not aligned with most of the 
groups such as Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan, East Turkestan Islamic Movement, Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, and ISIK. The Russians uh, recall that uh, following its defeat in Syria, the ISIS or ISIK now openly declares Russia as its enemy and keeps calling on its cadres to go after the Russian interests. These anti-Russia jihad calls are omnipresent in the ISIS and ISIK literature and hence a constant source of concern for Moscow. What does it mean? Well, it means the Russian focus remains counterterrorism without looking at the proxy nature of this menace. So it seems they are reluctant in drawing in Iran and India in the counter-terror debate because of its unusually and commercially driven linkages. This is what a lot of people and officials in Islamabad believe. Russia considers Pakistan as the key of influence, at least over the Haqqani network, the second strongest faction within the Taliban hierarchy, and expects Islamabad to exercise that leverage for preventing the Afghanistan-based Islamic movement of Uzbekistan as well as the ISAK from hitting at the Central Asian and Russian interests. Fourth, Moscow is also worried about the continued flow of narcotics from Afghanistan via Central Asia and wants to stem the supply chain with Pakistan's support. Now, by implication, terrorism and narcotics rooted in Afghanistan constitute the core of Pakistan-Russia relations as of today. As much as the US used the same issues, same pretexts for its two decades of presence in Afghanistan. So what does it all mean basically for the bilateral relationship? Well, going by all the current indicators, the fear of annoying Tehran and New Delhi will likely keep Moscow from any substantial engagement with Pakistan. We may all feel good about uh, the first prime ministerial visit from Pakistan to Moscow after over two decades, but that's it. It's a feel-good situation, but may not necessarily translate into substantial engagement between the two countries. Music